it is jank on glorious jank greetings everyone i'm glad to be here and i'm glad that you are here uh today's nonsense is uh it's a doozy uh casual suspect our good friend uh and has a person who has Tied inexorably to our channel, I think. I, uh, I have a great deal of affection for that individual, and he has done some editing even on the channel and things like that, and has cashed in channel points to get me to build a pile, as it happens. <laughs> uh, we have Bootlegger Stash, and we're trying to get the kill with Bootlegger Stash. We're not just trying to save up mana, no, 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 no. We're trying to get the kill with it. So... Uh, Reckless Fire Weaver. Whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under your control, Reckless Fire Weaver deals one damage to each opponent. So if we can get Bootlegger Stash onto the battlefield, we will uh, be able to then tap our lands for treasures, which then ping our opponent. Clear win condition, right? Well, I'm going to be honest with you. I have recorded a roughly a billion games with this deck. This deck is wild when it goes off, but geez, it is rough when it doesn't uh it's had to go through a number of different iterations uh we went all in on the combo with things like uh, trash for treasure to be able to discard this with our looting effects uh and then be able to return it to the battlefield things like that you know we went more just kind of slow moving we had we went all in on reckless fire weaver right now we do have a, a secondary win condition of stimulus package where you can sacrifice a treasure to get a citizen uh, but boy, boy, just a number of different iterations. We ended up having to go with the Bone Crusher Anger Swelter plan um, just to try and stay alive long enough to be able to get some wins. So uh, that's where we're at, right? Uh, a little bit of ramp, a little bit of card draw because we we are looting a fair amount. And of course, when you loot, it's, it's card disadvantage, right? Uh, but we're looting with Seize the Spoil and Big Score to get treasures down, which can get us into our bootlegger stash, right? Um... And then, of course, face looting just because it's a very strong card and hopes, helps us find our combo sooner rather than later. Um, without further ado, let's go see if we can someone get some wins with it. All right, folks, here we are up against Mayday Fan. Good luck, Mayday Fan. And yeah, good heavens. Uh, we're right into it already. Uh, we start on Stomping Ground and our opponent goes with a Swamp. We're going to be Reckless Fire Weaving right off the bat here. We have Seize the Spoils, we have Big Score, we're going to try and make things happen. Well, trying to decide how to do it, we elect to go with the Seize the Spoil, expecting to draw into some land. We do, opponent takes a damage, we get in with Reckless Fire Weaver, feeling good man. Alright, so, we've now got to, yeah, get a Big Score down. Uh, we'll draw another one, feels good. Um, I think we're going to attack now because they don't have any enough mana for... Uh, Wandering Emperor or anything. It is true they could cast it on their main phase then and get rid of our Reckless Fire Weaver, but that's not a thing they're likely to do that much. Uh, so we go ahead, big score on their end step. They do play an island. We weren't really expecting that. Dawn of Hope, of course. I was thinking, oh, it's going to be black, white, life gainy style, grindy, board sweepery style stuff. You know, uh, they ended up just cast or putting out an island there, which makes me very concerned. Uh, they allow the big score to resolve. Uh, so hopefully they'll allow a bootlegger stash to resolve, please. It does. Thank heavens. Okay. It is an artifact, so Reckless Fire Weaver pings them. Uh, only just now realizing, oh, crud, I didn't manually tap. You have to manually sacrifice the treasures because the client automatically thinks, oh, you don't want to sacrifice treasures. Uh, you want to keep your islands up. So our opponent actually had two more life because we did not manually tap. Because, again, we could have just cashed in the treasures we had before and then made two new treasures and have the same number of treasures, have the same number of untapped lands, only our opponent's life to lower. So not excited about that. We do see them cycle away a shark, which means they're kind of slow moving, I think. So we elect to abrade and get rid of that shark right now. Uh, use the mountain to make a treasure. Opponent, take your damage. Use the mountain to make a treasure. Opponent, take your damage. Use the mountain or use the rockfall vow to make a treasure, and the opponent goes with Varaska's contempt. Okay, well we uh, just go ahead respond by making the rest of our treasures big score while it's still on the battlefield. Of course, again this also makes treasures, and opponent drops to eight. Briefly consider our options here and allow it to happen. Opponent going back to ten. 
cannot pay for Dawn of Hope, so there are no cards drawn. We do decide Maze Mind Tome, join us, and pass the turn, see what Mayday Fan has to say about these things. Thinking it over. Goes with Hallowed Fountain Tapped. An admirable play, considering their life total. Trying to decide how to go about it, and ends up passing the turn. We decide to scry. Looking for finishers here. Opponent maintaining as much priority as they possibly can. All right. We see a Mind Stone and promptly put it to the bottom, and oh boy, glad we did. Here is a Stimulus Package. All right. Well, we cash in a treasure and tap a couple of lands to get uh, Stimulus Package down. Makes a couple of additional treasures, and we go ahead and pass the turn. Opponent makes a Dawn of Hope creature that has lifelink. Uh, opponent at 10 goes with Drowned Catacombs and crashes in. We briefly consider making a chump blocker and decide, no, we've actually got a pretty quick clock here. We're hoping our opponent just taps a bunch of mana, right? Draw your cards, do whatever. All this stuff is fine. Uh, we just want to kill you, essentially, right? So, Stimulus Package, make a dude. Stimulus Package, make a dude. Rockfall Veil, Rockfall Veil. Treasure, treasure. Make a dude, make a dude. Right? Exactly. Uh, so, it's true. We could have gotten that lifelinking token off the board. Um, but we were afraid that it might have sorcery speed removal and stuff. And to be flatly honest, I didn't want to show them what we were up to. Because it's quite possible when you're doing something this off the wall that maybe your opponent didn't quite connect all the dots. And now they go, oh, oh, I see. Right? Uh, so since we were ready to cut, catch him off guard, uh, we decided to wait until the end step. Briefly decide, or contemplate putting the land at the bottom, but you know what? This is just another 1-1. One, one. Uh, it's another treasure, right? In retrospect, I should have put the land in. They can't respond to it anyway. Uh, it's not really giving our opponent anything extra, right? So we should have done that because they could have instant speed removal for our bootlegger stash. If they had, you know, uh, vanishing verse, something like that. If they had done that, we would like to have been able to respond, make a bunch of dudes, stuff like that. As it happens, it doesn't matter. So, you know, Christ averted, but it, it was still the correct thing to do, I think, right? Opponent does make a Dawn of Hope token and passes the turn down to seven. Opponent trying to decide what to do. Gets in with one once. We take it. Down to 17, up to nine. Opponent does not draw, does not draw. Has Golden Demise. That's not what I was expecting, folks. Mayday fan. Uh, digging deep there, but no big deal. We're just going to go ahead. Make a treasure. 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 And you guessed it. Ladies and gents, we're making another treasure. Then what are we going to do with all those treasures, folks? We're going to make some dudes. <laughs> That's one. That's two. That's three. All right. The combo. Getting tedious, folks. It's getting tedious. <laughs> stimulus package. Sack a dude. Stimulus package. Sack a dude. To stimulus package. Sack a dude. Up to five. The opponent finally gives us priority back. We're allowed to go up to six. And we scry, we set a stop, and then scry. Reckless Fireweaver on top. Don't mind if I do. Yes, please. We're just going to slam it. Oh, shoot. I, uh, I kind of forgotten about the thing. And sure enough, they have the counterspell. All right, fine. You got it. Opponent drops the three. Opponent. What save? No attacks. All right, well... You know what that means, folks. It's time for treasures. We're going to make four of them. Yep. Then we're going to Stimulus Pack. Four citizens. Two ye olde battlefield. 
Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> and we're not quite sure what our opponent's got going on over there, but we are going to scry because they haven't conceded yet. They see we've got lethal. So we're worried about things like Settle the Wreckages and things. Admittedly, Settle the Wreckage just isn't that bad because we've got, you know, 10 attackers. Give us 10 uh, mountains. Don't mind if I do, right? So the opponent makes a couple of creatures. We allow those things to happen. We then just Bone Crusher and a Braid uh, so that they can't gain enough life and are going to take a bunch of damage. And the game is over. GG, Mayday fan. GG. All right, folks, here we are up against uh, Shimmy. Good luck, Shimmy. Uh, this hand looks okay, I guess. Fine. Again, I do want to stress, uh, this is one of the previous versions of the deck that was using Trash for Treasure, uh, as was the first game. Um, we are, you know, this this build is, I, I it's rough, folks. We, we've lost a number of games in between here and there. We've made several small changes, things like that, you know. Uh, the, the combo is not overly streamlined, right? So, we go with Reckless Fire, Fire Weaver. And Shimmy goes with an Eye Land. Alright, fine. And we're missing a Land Drop. Not ideal. Well, we elect not to attack because we're afraid they might be on some kind of Simic Flash thing. They do Shock in a Breeding Pool, which gives me even more of that opinion. But what are we going to do? We have to cast our cards. If they discard, if they counterspell this, it feels so bad because we already discarded a card. They elect not to. Okay, some land drops, not bad. I'm going to take a little bit of damage from the Reckless Fire Weaver, though. Feels good, man. No, no, uh, no, no. All right. So, uh, we're going to start off with Seize the Spoils. Really getting the, uh, Simic Flash vibes, you know? So we're trying to bait out a counterspell. Opponent. Just allows it. Okay, opponent get down to 16. Trying to decide how to go about it. Initially thought, let's big score. Now I'm kind of wishing we had just run out the stimulus package because this is, unfortunately, just the worst thing ever, I think. We discard another big score, draw a couple of lands, our opponent down to 14. That part is good, but they've got that stupid Night Pack Ambusher down. Ay, yi yi. Uh, Thornwood Falls gains our opponent life up to 15. Uh, going to crash in, does. We do not block. Take our beats down to 16. Go to the end step. All right, well, I go ahead and bone crush their face. See what our opponent has to say about these things. And allows it, gets a 3-3 three, three for the trouble. Down to 13. Well, okay. Bootlegger stash. Bone? Well, I'm sad. My feelings are hurt. My day is ruined. Uh, all that sort of thing. But we do have the Trash for Treasure. So let's see if this will resolve. Trash for Treasure. Please sign me up. Give me this bootlegger stash. Get rid of a treasure. Come on back. Bootlegger stash. No. Okay, we pay. Oh! Darn it. Stinking Simic Flash. I, uh, briefly considering how best to try and win this game. Get in front of the Night Pack at Ambusher. Drop to three. Our opponent's got four cards in hand. It is not looking good for us. We draw a mountain. Seize the spoils? Please. No, that's not going to do it. And we scoop it up. GG, Shimmy, GG. You got us. All right, we are back, folks. It's Flame Chill, our next opponent. They go with Griminish. Griminish yet? Yay. This version of the deck is not overly prepared for true, honest to goodness, real life aggression here. And Griminish yet number two and Battlefield Raptor. Good heavens. Okay. 
Well, a braid is good. I fear our opponent might be very aggressive here. They try to just get in. Battlefield Raptor gets taken off the board. Uh, so we go ahead, Faithlessly Loot, discard Maze Mind Tome because we're not expecting to have time for it. Briefly trying to decide how to go about the rest of it. Do we get rid of the bootlegger stash? That doesn't feel right. How are we ever going to win the game, you know? So we end up keeping these four cards and say, let's try and get the win as opposed to not lose. Opponent gets in with Grim Initiate. We allow it, expecting a, some, them to cast something, and they don't. Well, okay, that part is okay. Stimulus Package comes down, makes two treasures. We really don't want to cash these in for creatures yet because uh, we can get down the Bootlegger Stash next turn. That would be great. Uh, okay, so our turn. Well, another Bootlegger Stash, not ideal, but darn it, who cares? We've got our Bootlegger Stash down now. Uh, it is true, folks, we could have made another treasure by manually tapping, but what on earth? Our opponent goes with Outlaw's Merriment. Are you kidding me? Suddenly, I love our opponent. Uh, we draw another useless trash for treasure because we've already got our bootlegger stash. Not ideal, but we crash in for one. Okay, folks, we are living life to the fullest. Our opponent, clearly living life to the fullest, has Outlaw's Merriment. We have bootlegger stash. It is jank on glorious jank. Uh, I couldn't be happier to be in the seat that I'm in. And suddenly, Blade Historian comes out of the deck, or uh, out of the hand, and we don't have an answer. That's three toughness. Okay. Well, let's make some treasures. Our opponent allows all of it. Let's Stimulus Pack. Yep. Opponent allows all of it. I... Am at a loss here. We're making a lot, a lot, a lot of dudes. But like, our opponent's making free dudes, and their dudes are better, and their dudes have double strike. If this Blade Historian does not go away, we are unlikely to be able to win this game, but hold on just a darn minute. Here comes Reckless Fire Weaver, and oh no. Life Link? How are we supposed to pressure their life total now? A Johnny? <laughs> oh no! Uh, it is going from bad to worse, folks. Uh, I, in my tilt, forget to do the treasures first because we do ping with that. Uh, we then make a dude with the stimulus package, do a little blocking, do a little blocking, take a little damage, take a little damage. Uh, da down to 11. Then we draw the stinking Bone Crusher Giant, which we could have gotten rid of Blade Historian if only we'd been patient, but no! My tilt has led me to bad decision making. Sorry, folks. That's on me. We go after the Ajani because I don't want Ajani to be able to ultimate, and Tajik comes down. Briefly consider trying to fire that off and then think, no, the Atajik's going to ruin all possible avenues to victory after this. So now we've got to get rid of the Tajik. I'm just doing math. Goes with counters, counters. We make treasures. 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 We then bone crush. The Tajik. We then make dudes. Make dudes. Make dudes. And Pono gets in. I am completely and utterly chagrined. Not holding on to that first Bone Crusher Giant. Um absolutely coming back to bite us here I, I felt like we were in a position where once we had the bootlegger stash down a number of lands down there was just there was no way we could lose and yet uh the blade historian has completely ruined our game plan in every way shape manner and form we're continuing to kick down the can down the road because we're trying to find some avenue that we can uh save the game in our opponent goes battlefield raptor no that's a flyer all right, you guessed it, folks. Treasure, treasure, 
Treasure. 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 And treasure. Then pack, 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 pack. You you folks know the drill here. Lots and lots of very tedious one ones. And our opponent going to get aggressive. We're at three. They're at nine. We can take precious few other hits. Robert the Rich crashes, crashes in after taking a stimulus package last turn. Now takes a mind stone. We have to chump block with every last blessed one of these stupid little creatures. And they all go away. We draw land. That gives us chump blocker for the mentor of the meek, but not for the hasty creature that will be coming out of the hand. So we've got to hold back Reckless Fireweaver. Or, I mean, be coming out of the Outlaw's Merriment. Please forgive me. We now need our opponent to not put the 1-1 counter on the Battlefield Raptor. If we're going to have a shot at winning. Please don't, Flame Chill. Ah. Our opponent knows how to play Magic. GG, Flame Chill. GG. All right, fat folks, we are back. Bad Bowler 1971 is our opponent. And yeah, after last game, we decided it's time to change it up. We've got to have some mass removal in here, which is how we ended up on this build. Uh, the Trash for Treasure package went away, as did a couple of other random cards. Our opponent goes with Elvish Warmaster. We go with Stomp, because that card is terrifying. Uh, then we followed up with Den of the Bugbear. Uh, a Braid being held up as an insurance policy. Our opponent goes to Elvish Archdruid, and this is very, very tempting. We decide, no, we've got the Anger of the Gods. We can clean things up. They aren't making a big mess of things yet, so Elvish Archdruid comes down. They do have four mana, which is not ideal, because they could collect a company. Oh, crud. Our opponent goes to Elvish Warmaster and Elvish Visionary, and somehow they had four lands, and... They still have four mana. I don't understand how this works. But we were expecting Collect a Company. It was not. It was Beast Whisperer instead. Hallelujah. Yes. Anger of the Gods going to come out of the hand, obviously, because we don't want to die. Um, folks, we wanted to be able to run out Bootlegger Stash this turn because we could have. Remember those treasures? Not worth it. I, no thanks. I choose life, right? Uh, so our opponent tries to rebuild, goes with Lanaware Visionary. We briefly consider a braid. Side against it, because what if we don't draw land? Turns out, good decision, because we did not draw land, as it turns out. And this was our golden opportunity, post-board sweeper, to get down bootlegger stash. We might not have another opportunity in this game, and we need to start being able to capitalize on this stimulus package, right? Okay, Mind Stone off the top, not ideal. Trying to decide what to do. Big scores are tempting because just having lands is good and everything, right? Uh, we eventually decide on Mind Stone and uh, Seize the Spoils because it does give us a chump at least. Uh, and they're only going to have two attackers. So unless they can grow both of those attackers to 20 power, I mean, you know, or 17 power as it were, we should be okay. Um, you know, famous last words and all that. But... Our opponent goes with Paradise Druid and Lanaware Visionary for the turn. Uh, we are supremely pleased by this. They crash in for five. We have an Anger of the Gods just waiting in the wings. And... Yep. Fire it off. Play Spike Field Hazard as a land. Consider running out the Bone Crusher Giant here because it's a very large body. Um, it'll decide against it. Because we could big score here. We could uh, just make a bunch of 1-1s and start trying to clock our opponent. Uh, they are on 8 mana. So if they had Crater Huff here, they could play it. But they don't win. Right? So, um, our opponent goes with Finale of Devastation, though. X equals 4. What are you going to get? It's Beast Whisper. Okay, well, you know what? We got you. Now we have Tedious Combo as well. <laughs> Fortunately, just a couple of treasures to make is all. A couple of citizens to make is all. Land drop. Is there really a wrong way to eat this Reese's? We, we're trying to decide if we're gonna if we're supposed to attack or just make dudes. Bad Bowler says no. Don't worry about it. I'm good. And scoops him up. So GG Bad Bowler. GG. Uh, 
All right, folks, we are back. We are back. And uh, let me tell you, that was a wild ride to be sure. Um, would I recommend crafting this deck to get your wins? Absolutely not. I would not craft this deck just to get wins. Um, at least this version of it does struggle. I think, honestly, our win condition is very slow. It is inevitable. We will kill you eventually, right? Just making these treasures, whether it's Stimulus Package or whether it's Reckless Fire Weaver, uh, over the course of a couple of turns, Reckless, once we get Bootlegger stashed down, we're making, we have what, four, five, six lands? We can ping them for four, five, six a turn? Like, that's a lot of damage, if this survives. But, uh, there's lots and lots of creature removal out there. So, a lot of the time, it ends up being Stimulus Package, which honestly is just really stinking tedious, right? Um... So I think it's strongly possible we want maybe even more Sweltering Suns, things like that. We've just got to be able to stay in the game long enough, right? And there were plenty of or situations where we just really couldn't, right? We really, really struggled to do that thing. So uh, on the whole, uh, the deck is cool. It, it, the Getting the combo assembled always felt really good and stuff, but it was just so difficult with how aggressive the meta can be, you know? Um, so... On the whole, I would not recommend it for wins, but if you've already got the wild cards and stuff like that, or you've already got the things crafted, give it a go. See if you could uh, improve it for me. Uh, I would love to hear how your versions go. Uh, in the meantime, I want to thank Casual Suspect for cashing in those um, uh, channel points to get this video made. And I want to encourage you folks, if you also want to get a video of your favorite nonsense, Come on over to the Twitch channel. Just hang out. No money or anything. You don't have to donate or you don't, you don't have to sub. You, you don't even have to be a follower. I mean, I appreciate it, right? Following helps, but you don't have to. But just hang out in the chat and you'll acquire channel points over time. And then you cash those channel points in and you can make me do this uh, or around whatever variety you wish. So thank you all for watching. And I will encourage you all to have a fantastic evening.